today's program we are going to discuss ensemble models one of such ensemble model is random forest let us understand what is this there is a concept called wisdom of crowds what is wisdom of crowds one should not expend energy in trying to identify an expert within a group but instead you rely on group's collective wisdom that means you don't need to really take a suggestion from an expert you can simply follow the, a group of smart people let's say a lot of smart people together doing one particular job if you simply blindly follow them then you will end up at the right option how do you convert that into model building imagine the problem statement is what is the estimated monthly expense of a family in our city in our city what is the estimated monthly expense of a family in scenario 1 we gave that problem statement to an eminent professor this professor builds his own model and he predicts that 6500 dollars is the estimated family expense in scenario 2 we gave the same problem statement to 100 assistant professors these 100 assistant professors they built 100 different models each one gave their own prediction somebody told 6800 dollars somebody gave 7000 dollars somebody gave 8000 dollars 7500 7300 like that 100 models gave 100 predictions the average of all these 100 predictions is 7200 dollars now if i ask you the question one model prediction versus average of 100 model predictions which one has a greater chance to be more accurate which one do you think will be near to the accurate value most often what happens is the average of 100 models 100 assistant professors model the average of them all their predictions that seems to have a higher chance of near to the actual value do you agree with this do you also feel the same most of yes. this one will have a higher chance to be to near to the accurate value isn't it that is known as wisdom of crowds instead of building one model if you are building hundreds of such models this is known as ensemble learning so what is ensemble learning what is ensemble learning usually we have a data set and we build a model on it let's say i have a data set i build decision trees on it and then when the new data comes this decision tree model gave some prediction that's how we work with it one model only but now we take the data we take model 1 model 2 model 3 model 4 and so on model 100 hundreds of models m100 model 1 has 90% accuracy model 2 has 89 model 3 has 88 89 88 86 89 90 90 like that different different accuracies are there when the new data point comes one data point will give you these many predictions model 1 predicts it to be minus 1 model 2 predicts it to be minus 1 model 3 predicts it to be plus 1 model 4 predicts it to be minus 1 that is one data point for one data point you cannot give four predictions these four combined together finally what is one single predicted class is it minus 1 or plus 1 since most of the models are saying minus 1 we one. will say the predicted value is minus 1 that is known as ensemble model what are ensemble models take the data build multiple models take the prediction from each model if it is regression how do you combine all the predictions in regression you can get one predicted value by taking the average of all predictions isn't it yes sir if it is classification let's say if you have 100 models if it is classification how do you do that out of these 100 models let's say 75 models are saying class 0 25 models are saying class 1 then the predicted value will be class 0 isn't it zero. most of the models are predicting it to be 0 the prediction will be 0 that is known as 
ensemble model building within ensemble model building there is a particular procedure called bagging bagging is an ensemble model building technique that we will be using let us understand what is bagging and how this ensemble model building works how we build multiple models and then collate their results so bagging has two parts in it bootstrap sampling and aggregation of learners bagging bootstrap sampling and aggregation of learner bootstrap aggregating bootstrap sampling plus aggregation of learners let us first understand what is bootstrap sampling okay let us see what is bootstrap sampling let us suppose if you have a data set of 10 records i have a data set i have a data set which has 10 records okay let's say the record ids are record number one record number two record number three four five six seven eight nine there are ten records okay let us suppose if i take a sample whose size is also 10 if i take a sample whose size is also 10 what will be that sample then if the data size is also 10 sample size is also 10 then what do you have you have the sample and the data almost same isn't it they will not be different data and the sample will be same but bootstrap sample bootstrap sample is different a bootstrap sample will also have sample size as 10 bootstrap sample also has sample size of 10 however the samples are picked slightly differently out of these 10 records pick one record randomly pick one out of 10 records randomly that is first record similarly out of these 10 records once again out of 10 records pick one record randomly pick one record randomly like that repeat that procedure 10 times now this is bootstrap sample one or bag one bootstrap sample two bag two bag three bag four within a bag there can be a case where few records are repeated multiple times do you agree within a bag few records are repeated multiple times within a bag or within a bootstrap sample few records may never have been picked up here for example five has been repeated multiple times but four was never picked up whereas if i come here four has been repeated multiple times if i come here five was never picked up but five repeated multiple times here a bootstrap sample will have the same sample size as the population however some records may be repeated some records are never picked up that is a bootstrap sample are you clear on a bootstrap sample how is it slightly different from a general sample is it clear now how bootstrap samples are picked each record is sampled one at a time and we repeat that process n number of times Sir, is there any criteria that we will repeat the procedure for that much amount of time? Like here, you have repeated that for four times. Excuse me, can you hear me? Yeah. Hello. Yeah. Yes. Sir. Yeah. Okay. Looks like there is some disconnect. Yeah. Sir, yeah. some. I have a question here. Yeah. Like you have repeated the procedure, like the bag uh, thing in sample bag. Now you have repeated that for four times. Four times. This is like yeah. each one is a bootstrap sample, and we can create any number of bags. So this is bag one, bag two, bag three, bag four, bag five, bag six, bag seven, like that. Okay. But sir, we have to stop somewhere else, no? so like uh, yes, we have yeah. to. So Correct. I. So this is just the procedure of bootstrap sampling. Okay. Then okay. let us understand what is bagging procedure. Okay. 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 Sir. 
So the bagging algorithm goes like this. Let us suppose you have a data set of n records. Let's say there are n rows. Let n be 20,000 rows are there. Okay. Let us suppose you have t columns. Let t be some 25 columns are there. Then you make bootstrap sample one, bootstrap sample two, bootstrap sample three, bag one, bag two, bag three, k, bag k, hundreds of bags, hundred bags of data we have created. And what will be the size of each bag? How many records will be there inside each bag? Can you guess it? How many records will be found inside each bag? Bag one will have? Maybe 20,000 records. N rows. N rows. Isn't it each bag? What is the size of each bag? There will be N. N, N is 20,000 here. The same number of records as the data. The same number of records will be found in the bag. Isn't it? But in each bag, maybe out of these 20,000, few records are repeated, few records are dropped. Few records are repeated multiple times, few more records are dropped. Like that, a different set of records are repeated, a different set of records are dropped. On each of the bag, you build a model. Model 1, Model 2, Model 3, Model K. And the model building procedure is same. Model building technique is same, which means if it is regression, this is also regression, this is also regression, everything is regression. Let's say if it is decision tree, this is also decision tree, this is also decision tree, this is also decision tree. Everything is same. The model building procedure must be same. Then finally, how do you collate each of these models? There is no single model. Each of these model will be kind of separate. Once a one new data point comes, you will get a prediction from every model. How do you collate the predictions? If it is regression, you take the average. If, you, if it is classification, you look at out of these 100 models, how many models are saying a class zero, how many models are saying class one based on that, you do the collation. Tell me one thing, if the model building procedure is same, does that mean model M1 is a carbon copy of model M2, which is a carbon copy of M3, carbon copy of M4? Are these model carbon copies exactly the same model? Or is there anything that is different from model M1 to model M2? Is there anything changing from M1 to M2? N rows, yes, the data we are taking is different. The data. Yes. Isn't it here? We, yeah, the bag. Maybe we are focusing on a particular piece of data here, ignoring another piece. Maybe we are focusing on a different piece here, ignoring another piece. The data is different from the model to model. This model is focusing on a particular part of the data, particular part of the features, particular part of the patterns. Here we are focusing on particular patterns. So the model will be slightly different from model in a sense the parameters or if it is decision tree, the rules, they will be different from model to model. That is the bagging algorithm. Now, when you compare a single decision tree or a single model like regression or logistic regression or decision tree, these kind of ensemble or bagged models, they tend to give two to 3% lift in the accuracy. I'm going to tell you some situations. I'm going to give you examples of few problem statements where this two to 3% lift in the accuracy is also considered as a pretty good lift. Let's say if decision tree is finally giving up at 90% accuracy with the same data, you can push that model into 92 or 93% accuracy, which is like a great improvement in certain scenarios where we are very much desperate for accuracy. Okay. Generally, we don't even use bagging as a general technique. We use a very special case of bagging, which is known as random forest. What is random forest? In bagging, you can build any model. Instead of building any model, specifically if you are building decision tree, decision tree, decision tree, decision tree, decision tree only if you are building, then bagging becomes random forest. So. Random forest is a special case of bagging, okay? Special case of bagging. Just by doing some adjustment to bagging algorithm, you will get random forest algorithm. So let us see what is the random forest algorithm. 
Suppose that you have a data set which has n rows. Let n be 20,000 rows are there. And t columns, let t be some 25 columns. You make k bootstrap samples or k bags. Usually k is in the order of hundreds, hundreds of bags. Once again, what will be the size of each bag? What will be the size of each bag? N rows. N rows. N, N, N. N happens to be 20,000 here. On each bag, specifically, you build a decision tree model, decision tree model, decision tree model, decision tree model, decision tree model. That is your random forest. Let's say if one data point comes while you are predicting, one data point comes, then you will get a decision from each decision tree. You will get a prediction from each decision tree. Let's say 100 models are there, 100 predictions you will get. Then collate all these 100 predictions. Collate all these 100 predictions, you will get one number. For example, if you have 100 decision trees, out of them, around 68 decision trees are saying plus one. Remaining 32 decisions are say decision trees are predicting it to be minus one. Then we will say the predicted value is plus one. Like that, we get the single predicted value. There is no single model. These 100 models, there are 100 predictions. Finally, at the prediction time, the collation will happen. This whole thing is the random forest algorithm. Compared to a single decision tree, random forest algorithm tends to give always two to three percent lift in the accuracy. Definitely, it should give two to three percent lift in the accuracy. However, that was all in theory. But when data scientists started using random forest, they saw that decision tree is giving better accuracy than random forest. That means one model is giving better accuracy than 100 models put together. People totally got shocked. How come one model is giving better accuracy than hundreds of models? Here is the reason. Though this is a bootstrap sample, though we repeat few records, though we ignore few records, though we repeat few records, ignore few records. But the overall info present in this bootstrap sample is almost the complete information from the data. The patterns that are there in the data, usually every row may not be a unique pattern. Sometimes two rows may contain the same pattern. Customer one has the same age, customer two has same age, customer one has same income, customer two has same income. Both of them are buying a product. Then they may not be bringing two new patterns. So the data itself may have some duplication of information. Even if you ignore few records, still it may contain the complete info. Even this bootstrap sample may complain the complete info. So like that, every bootstrap sample completes the complete, contains complete information, which means this decision tree almost gives the same rules as this decision tree, which means this decision tree is almost identical to this one. This decision tree is almost identical to this one. Every decision tree, is almost identical. That means if there are 15 rules in this, 14 are matching, 14 are matching, 14 are matching. Like that, almost every decision tree is giving the same information, which means we are building a single decision tree, collating it 100 times. Do you think building a single decision tree, collating it 100 times, is it going to help us? That's not going to help us. It is almost like, when we are comparing single professor model versus 100 assistant professors models. Do you remember it? Why did we pick 100 assistant professors model? Because we thought that these 100 assistant professors are working independently. They built 100 models. What if I tell you these 100 assistant professors are sitting inside one room? All of them are discussing among themselves. Finally, they built one model only, but each one of them submitted it individually. That means one model was built, submitted it 100 times. Do you think submitting this model 100 times, is it going to beat single professor model? Think about it. No. Simply if I'm submitting the same model 100 times, how will it give me better accuracy? The same thing is happening here. Like all those same models are 
getting repeated multiple times that's not going to help us that is why random forest in reality should give more accuracy than decision tree but it is giving decision tree is giving more accuracy then there is a small correction that has been done there is an additional constraint that has been added this is that additional constraint focus on this when you are building this decision tree don't use all the columns from the data don't use that use only less number of columns randomly picked five columns randomly picked five randomly picked five randomly picked five while you are building each decision tree use only randomly picked five columns from the data do you think that will now make this decision tree to learn something independent of this decision tree randomly you picked five columns to build this decision tree randomly you are picking five columns to build this decision tree while you are splitting that will make this decision tree independent each decision tree will be now working independently do you agree with that point so the additional constraint is use only p columns while building the decision tree where p is much much less than t t is the number of columns in the overall data p is the number of features or number of features that you are using for building the model overall features don't use them use only lesser number of features with this extra constraint random forest started giving better accuracy than decision tree it is now very widely well proven on all types of data sets that random forest gives a better lift in the accuracy compared to a single decision tree so this p the number of features that we are using should not be the complete features it has to be lesser number now that introduces a new issue what is the new issue here there are few hyper parameters which are in our hand we have to set them the number of trees or the number of bags k the number of bags or number of trees this is in our hand we can set it let's say you if you say i want to build 10 trees 10 trees will be built if i say i want to build 100 trees 100 trees will be built if i want to build 500 trees 500 trees will be built this k is in my hand so while setting k by mistake or if we have set k to be a very small number let's say in this example if i say k equal to 3 only i'm building three trees only that means i'm taking three bags and i'm building three trees is there any issue if i build less number of trees is there any issue is there any problem diversity will be less if you take more bags you will have more data so if you are taking lesser number of bags let's say you have taken only three bags on each bag let's say you are using five five columns overall how many columns are there 25 columns are there here you are using 5 plus 5 plus 5 maximum how many columns you will use 15 columns that means there will be a loss of data you will not be using complete data that means overall your model will not get to see all the columns all the features the model will have very less accuracy which means your model will be underfitted that is why k the number of features or the number of trees the number of bags or the number of trees this has to be a very large number usually when you are setting it up you have to set it to be a very large number maybe something like 50 or 100 or 200 or 300 something like that it is in your hand when you are in doubt you have to set it to be a very large number obviously we have to fine tune and find the optimal number but you have to search for a very very large number usually you cannot set this to be a very small number why if you set it to be a very small number then you may be missing out on a lot of information which is not good for the model that is the first hyperparameter that we need to set correctly the second hyperparameter the number of features the number of features p that is also in your hand i'll tell you the mistake that people do you know what p is in my hand I want to build the best decision tree here. Let me choose P equal to 24. Let me choose 24 out of 25 features. Let me choose 24 out of 25 features. 24 out of 25. 24 out of 25. 24 out of 25. Everywhere, 
I am picking 24 features out of 25 features. Can you tell me what is the mistake? The intention is good. I want to build the best decision tree, best one, best one, best one, best one. But what is the risk if I am picking almost all the features? What is the risk? If I am picking almost all the features, the same problem. Initially, we had a problem. What was the problem? This tree will be almost same as this one. This one will be almost same as this one. The trees will not be independent anymore. The decision tree will not learn anything independently. Almost all the trees will give the same information. That is the reason why the number of features P, this has to be a, a smaller number. This has to be a lower number. Usually, when you have no idea, you can take the overall number of columns T, take the square root of T, search around it. You have to set P as around square root of T. Roughly, if you have 25 columns, what can you choose as P? What can you set as P? Five. Something like five. 5 or 6 or 7. Around square root of T is what you need to choose. Number of trees or the number of bags, what should be that number? When you are working with random forest, number of trees or number of bags. That number has to of rows equal to. It should that be has to be a very large number. Okay. The number of trees or the number of bags. Okay. That how many bags you should collect. That has to be a very large number. Okay. Inside each bag, the number of rows will be same as the number of uh, overall number of rows. What I'm saying is, the bags itself, the count of bags, the number of trees, that has to be a very large number, 50 or 100 or 150 or 200 or 300. P, the number of features, that has to be a very small number, usually somewhere around square root of T. That is where we have to take. Okay. When we set these two parameters accurately, when we fine tune them in multiple iterations, Finally, the random forest model that you will get, that will have better accuracy than decision tree. It has been proven already on various data sets. Random forest gives a slightly better accuracy than the decision trees model. For sure, there is no doubt about it. Okay. Any questions on this? This is all the theory. We will get into the case study. But before that, any questions on this? Um, sir, in decision tree, we used to get a set of rules which we used to consider further. Here also, we are doing the same thing or? Uh... So here, what we get is we get a set of rules for every tree. Let's say for decision tree one, you will get rules. For decision tree two, you will get rules. So the final decision happens based on all these rules and then final collation will happen let us suppose if you have one data point okay for one data point this decision tree will give a prediction right yes. this decision tree that will be based on the rules created by this decision tree okay? okay let's say the predicted value is minus one class minus one this decision tree will have its own rules from there we will get the prediction this decision tree, it's have all rules from there. We'll get the prediction like that. Every decision tree will have its own rules. We will get the predictions. Finally, we collate all of the predicted values based on them. Highest possible one will be the prediction. So here in random forest, you will have 100 trees or like the number of trees that you have set and their individual rules. That will be the final model. Okay. Sir, uh, suppose in one scenario, the a, a data set is selected uh, 100 uh, trees. Okay. In another scenario, another data set is selected on the same data only. Right. Uh, that uh, 200 or something like that. Right. So the final result will be uh, must be different uh, like compared to those two. Possible. So that is why there can be multiple solutions. Usually when we are fine tuning these parameters, the optimal value is not just a single point. It has to be 100 trees. It has to be five. This is not the only solution. Maybe depth also we tend to fine tune. So the optimal solutions are a range of values. Two people may have two different values, 
but their model results might be same okay it is possible okay sir yeah so you can have like somebody has built 80 trees someone else has built 81 trees okay there is not necessity that the results has to vary the optimal values are a range of values okay only if they are hugely different somebody has built 80 trees versus somebody has built three trees only then the predictions coming out of this model may not be same as the predictions come out of this model okay yes even with these trees we will see what is the train accuracy what is the test accuracy even with the trees, we'll see what is train accuracy what is test accuracy then we tend to see like what is the final optimal value okay sir thank you so here we will not get any overfitting scenario there can be there can be overfitting let's say uh, here another another parameter is depth if the depth of the tree is too much okay or if the number of features are almost same then also overfitting happens underfitting also can happen overfitting underfitting is an issue even in random forest as well yes okay so that so means pruning technique also will be used here mm -hmm. or no sir? yes yeah we have to use that pruning technique or we may have to set these parameters accurately that means we have to look at the train accuracy test accuracy adjust and fine-tune the models correct Uh, sir, here the performance is getting improved because of the hyperparameter which we are considering. The performance is getting improved because of the rule that we are building multiple models and we are focusing on particular part of the data with a particular part of the features. Okay. That is the reason why we are getting better accuracy. It is almost like divide and rule. Maybe one decision tree model may not have the flexibility to learn all the patterns in one shot. By giving hundreds of chances, we are trying to capture all the patterns in the data. That is the reason why we are getting either like two to three percent accuracy lift. So the advantage in random forest is you will get two to three percent accuracy lift, but there is a disadvantage in random forest. Can you highlight the disadvantage in random forest? Let's say if you compare decision tree with random forest. Random forest advantage wise, you will have high accuracy compared to a decision tree, which will have low accuracy. What is the disadvantage in random forest? Let us suppose if you go to decision tree, can you draw one single decision tree and display it to me? Is it possible to draw a decision tree, show it to me, which variable entered, where it has entered, etc., etc. Those details. Is it possible for a single decision tree? Have you seen drawing a decision tree, all of you? Yes. yes sir. We can draw and explain. So model interpretability. You can interpret the model easily in a decision tree. You can read the output easily. But is it possible to draw a random forest model? Hundreds of decision trees. Can you draw them? Can you really explain which variable is entering where, which variable is having what impact? Is it possible? Random forest is a, a black box method. Do you agree? Yes. What happens internally, we don't know. We give the input, we get the output. But the way we have clearly seen what is happening inside a decision tree, that we are not able to see inside a random forest. Do you agree? Yes. Yeah. So random forest is a black box method. Decision tree takes less time because we are building only one decision tree. Random forest is complex. It takes more time. Do you agree? Yes. In terms of disadvantages, random forest is a black box method. What happens inside a random forest? It is very difficult to comprehend. Whereas decision tree is easy to interpret. Random forest must be used in such places where the client tells us, even I'm okay with black box method. I don't care what happens internally. I just want high accuracy. Then random forest can be used. But if the client tells you that, you know what? I want to do customer segmentation. I want to see the customer segments. I want to apply one strategy on each segment. Those kind of detailed analysis later on we want to do. There, though we are getting less accuracy, we have to work with decision trees only, isn't it? 
some cases black box methods are not encouraged do you agree when you want to build a strategy on the clear output if prediction is not the only requirement you want to do some extra strategy and analysis then you may require simple techniques which are giving you the perfect customer segments let's say in marketing and all that if i want to apply a strategy on each segment here is the segmentation happening can i get five or six customer segments as a result in random forest or only i'm getting the prediction only prediction only prediction will happen segmentation doesn't happen so there are some cases where random forest is a good fit which we are going to see now there are some cases where decision tree is a good fit the advantages disadvantages we must be aware of both of them when you have a problem statement in your hand then you must decide based on the business application understand the problem statement if the client feels that this is the solution this is the right solution then we may have to provide them this for a given problem statement if you feel that there is a better way of solving that problem using random forest then we should provide that isn't it it's not a cheat sheet it's not a table that tells us which model to use when it's a problem statement it's the underlying business that we should take into consideration do you agree with that point that in the real life we don't work on these academic tables which model to use when if the data is like this use this model if it is like this use this model we don't follow such rules based on the problem statement what is the best possible solution that we can provide that we have to choose we have to decide that on the fly i'm going to give you a few examples where random forest is a good fit in fact our the case study that we are going to take then you yourself will feel that here random forest is a good fit before getting into the case study are there any questions anyone this is the video that has been shared by volvo i found it on youtube apparently the person who is sitting in that truck he is not applying the brakes automatically using some sensors there has been a model that has been implemented that model will take this sensor data as input and it will predict whether there is going to be a collision or not if there is going to be a collision it will raise some alert based on that alert the brakes will be automatically applied so there are some sensors that are kept in that truck so if you see here as this approaches very near to the car some kind of sensor will start like some kind of alert will start buzzing you see that and as soon as it approaches then the brakes are uh, you know automatically applied luckily we have a similar data set which we can uh, do some experiment the data set that we got has been shared by ford ford they kept some sensors in around 4 million cars 40 lakh cars they have kept some sensors sensor 1 sensor 2 sensor 3 there are some sensors even in the tires sensors i think you may have seen parking sensors to a car next time you try to observe like all of you must be knowing them isn't it small small devices some sensors will measure the uh, what do you call distance have you seen it like as you are approaching yes, a particular sir. obstacle uh, back or like we have seen parking sensors mostly but in the high end cars you will see all type of sensors even if you if you open mercedes benz high end car tire inside the tire there will be a sensor that means what is the air pressure that sensor will tell us if the pressure is totally low based on that also they will take some corrective measures to change the suspension to keep the control and all that like that this uh, ford has kept some some seven sensors that will get the vehicular data continuously they will gather vehicle related data what is the speed of the vehicle which gear you are in 
what is a wheel alignment what is the air pressure in all the wheels okay what is the temperature of the engine like that all the vehicle related information gathered by these seven sensors there are some other sensors some other seven sensors that will gather physiological data physiological information of the driver whether the driver is sitting in upright position or relaxed position whether he is looking at stride or at an angle he is looking like he is deviated he is distracted how many times the driver is blinking like that different different uh, values these some other seven sensors are picking there are few more sensors that are picking i think 22 sensors in all environmental data weather related data is it hot is it snowy is it windy is it raining what is the humidity what is the visibility those kind of things are gathered by few more sensors what they have done they kept all these sensors in the car they sold all these cars 4 million which means 40 lakh cars they have sold so what did they do they waited for one year in one year after selling these 40 lakh cars in one year a lot of cars came back to garage with fatal accidents it is usual that out of 40 lakh cars definitely some cars will meet with accident so some cars have met with accidents they came back to garage as soon as a car comes to the garage as soon as a car comes to the garage with a fatal accident they will put some device just before the accident whatever are the sensor details all the sensor details just before the accident they are gathering just before the accident what is the car number 3 just before the accident sensor details car number 4 came to the garage what are the sensor details for that car just before the accident like that they gathered all the information of the details of the sensors just before the accident then they mentioned this fatal as one 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 so these are the sensor details associated with accident these are the sensor details associated with accident these are the sensor details associated with accident now they have to gather the data on zeros what are zeros no accident zero data is easy take your car take a round make sure there is no accident okay these are the sensor details for no accident again go to highway these are the sensor details for no accident go to a park these are the sensor details for no accident like that go to different different places where these cars have been gone make sure that there is no accident i get the sensor details okay these are the sensor details for accident these are the sensor details when there is no accident this is the data that they have gathered since data is very important they have invested lot of money infrastructure time to gather this data isn't it they don't want to take any proxy data or they don't want to get the data from the lab they want to build the model on the real data that's why this much infrastructure has to be created to just get the data okay later on you know what ford has done they hosted this data on a website and they ran a data science competition so data scientists around the world you can participate in this competition take this data the best model wins the prize money from ford do you know any website where these data science competitions are run kaggle kaggle so this is a competition on kaggle so it was a, an old competition the competition name is the challenge name is stay alert ford challenge stay alert ford challenge i have given you some background on this you can get the rest of the background from here like different type of variables physiological environmental vehicular data etc etc let's say if we are providing a solution to ford let us see what will be our approach tell me you have two types of models one is simple model like decision tree which will have slightly less accuracy 
but more interpretability you can tell what is the impact of sensor one impact of sensor two etc etc more interpretability is there but slightly less accuracy versus a complex model like random forest more accuracy but the black box model i cannot tell what is happening internally but i can give you good accuracy which model would you think ford will give a price money Decentry. more accurate model Random. or less accurate model so decent more accurate. definitely it will be more accurate model Random they don't price. really care what is the impact of sensor 1 what is the impact of sensor 2 what is the impact of sensor 3 we don't care about it what ford will tell us i'll give you all this information your model should take all these sensors as the input okay then your model should give me the right prediction if the model is giving me the right prediction i don't ask you any questions you don't need to draw the decision tree you don't need to draw anything or anything simply you give me the highest accurate model i will be perfectly fine with it so the ford will be giving the price money to those guys who can give the best accurate model obviously it has to validate and all those things if you are giving the best model it is validating well also obviously if you are giving 2 to 3 percent more lift you are saving 2 to 3 percent more lives isn't it like that the one that is the highest accurate model in some cases those kind of models are preferred okay excuse me sir yeah like you said here that we, uh, the company will go for the random forest model no no the company will not tell us random forest model they'll tell us that highest accuracy Yes, but say, the thing uh, like as you said like they don't care about the sensors but it might be the reasons for the accident like uh, the fatal accident for the sensor will be not working uh, so at that time we have to like if, if it is like decision tree then we can give that in this scenario the sensors are like your sensor is not working properly that we so, cannot tell from decision tree or are both of them will not be able to do that decision tree what it will do which sensor has what impact isn't it whether the sensor is working or not, that we cannot say, isn't it? Even in decision tree. What does decision tree do? If you give this sensor information, it will give us the prediction, isn't it? Yes or no? Yes, sir. The same thing random forest is also doing? Yes, sir. But decision tree will do it with less accuracy. Random forest will give you better accuracy. But what is yes. the difference when you build a decision tree model you can explain okay out of these 22 sensors some first sensor that entered the model is this one the second one that entered is this one like that you can clearly explain okay which here it doesn't really help us okay at yes. the end of the day let's say if you read the exact description of the food in this challenge the price money will be given to those guys who will give us the best accuracy they will not tell us here that the model has to be interpretable and all that okay okay sir. Yeah. got it sir. what we will do is we will get the data set uh, sir just a question yeah. sorry to interrupt yeah. sir this is done with respect to the problem statement or the data sets that we have problem uh, statement plus uh, the data set yes. both data set right both so based models. on that we need to decide the model right problem statement and what is the best solution basically you have a problem okay mm. don't see that problem as a statistical or a machine learning problem okay mm. see that problem as a business problem okay i have a business problem mm. what is a business problem before the accident happens i want to predict it. okay mm. Mm. what is the best thing that i could do Okay, tomorrow if a better algorithm comes, okay, even better than random forest, I would rather go for that. Okay, it's like that. Okay. So here, the one that gives us a slightly better accuracy is the one that is uh, picked because finally, the you can consider even a black box model. If it is providing better accuracy, it is going to help us in saving more lives or giving us right prediction. That's the reason. But if you are working on a market segmentation model, there each segment is important for me. That is why we can compromise on accuracy, still go for a decision tree model. So case to case basis, what is the best solution that we have to see? 
Sir, so random forest we can use for all kind of classification, not restricted to uh, segmentation. All kind of classification, in general classification, correct. Okay. Sir, on the curiosity notes, so after giving the accuracy, like uh, what is the next step like from the Ford company? So we will be submitting our model also. Okay. So they will be using our model. What they do is uh, they take a small chip kind of thing. So the, the, the deployment team, let's say automobile engineer. So what mm -hmm. is our responsibility as a data scientist? We take all these sensors as input. Okay. Mm -hmm. And these sensors will be sent to the model, right? Okay. So they will put up a, like they will put this model on a chip or something that will automatically take all the sensor information from this chip you will get the model prediction then that prediction you have seen that alert right red alert okay okay, okay. those kind of alert will be generated and then if you are like nearly getting into the accident maybe the speed will be reduced or maybe the suspension will be changed airbags will be blown up or maybe the direction will be changed those kind of uh, security measures will be deployed by the automobile engineers okay but but we will not give the information in the sensor level right we give the How... prediction level at the prediction okay. level okay. okay so basically you get all the sensor information mm -hmm. the sensors are the input isn't it okay and what will you predict accuracy of the fatal sensor. accident or not that accuracy is not a prediction when you mm -hmm. predict how accurate is the prediction is different what are Correct. you predicting there is going to be fatal accident or not yes or not Correct, correct. Yes, like in the next second, there's going to be fatal accident or not. Let's say you have predicted that to be one. What does that mean? Let's say you're driving, a, a person is driving right now, our model has predicted it to be one. What does that mean? There's going to be fatal accident, right? Correct. That is the prediction. Now, how can you use it? Think about it. Let's say I told that there's going to be a fatal accident. That's the model has predicted. How can you take this input and what will be the use of this? prediction so they they will check on the sensors and what are all the things they need to work on it behind simple the stop yeah. the vehicle that is one correct solution yeah yes or okay no? okay or change the suspension that's another solution okay. yes or no you don't really need to worry about the sensors now mm -hmm. why are we building this model for accident prevention correct okay. so if you remember this one so you can imagine this whole thing as like as this is approaching so if you go to the later part of this video as this is approaching you look at this model let's say this is the prediction made by our model look at this there's a small red dot that is blinking can you see that yes sir here so that is the prediction made by our model okay what is our model trying to tell us that there is going to be a fatal accident slowly look at this red dot there is no red dot until here so slowly yeah. in that circle you will try to observe so in this circle what you will see is look at this just now it blink yes sir. So there is going to be an accident so here volvo what they are doing is they are reducing the speed of the vehicle as soon as they see this you can uh, make so many uh, such enhancements like later on maybe not necessarily reducing the speed you can uh, deviate the vehicle or you can uh, change the suspension or do basically you can take corrective actions to stop or avoid the accident that is the okay. final yeah. okay okay sir. Uh, sir, uh, for for example if there is a speed limit of um, more than 90 to 100 uh, is this applicable even uh, the sensor flow was been on the flow uh, uh, could able to predict uh, um, by by the gap between uh, two, 200 feet or 100 feet like that. Is, is this possible? Uh, uh, we predict exactly what we expected. We have to, whenever we get such questions, we have to think, do we have the data to predict it? Okay. Whenever you get a question like that, okay, think about it. Prediction happens what? It doesn't happen out of the blue. If you want to build a model, you have to build the model based on the data, isn't it? Yes. And I have a requirement. Okay. Right now you have listed down the requirement, correct? For yes. doing a particular thing. For this requirement, do we have the data? 
if we have the data it is possible yes or no yeah yes sir if we do not have the data it is impossible do you agree yeah the data that we have right now what is it the given census data whether it is a fatal accident or not that data is there with us right now okay so we are limited to predict only this much in here that means in this data set the sensor data related to accident sensor data related to no accident is there so our model can predict only whether there is going to be an accident or not that's it whether you are getting into high speed or low speed that data is not with us okay that's why we cannot build a model on this data for fulfilling that requirement okay okay but if we have gathered a data for it for that requirement then we can attempt to that as well so why i i uh, had a doubt on this so sometime it may uh, influence infrastructure or roads or uh, flat roads or uh, different uh, slopes so in this case whether it would uh, predict or not so that's why i was mm. thinking so prediction is possible only with the data so basically we have to think about like what data we have and uh, like this is what i want to predict and these are the features that may predict it and do i have this whole data okay what is your target and what are the features if we have the data that uh, you know problem statement can be solved otherwise we have to collect the data to solve that problem statement okay, okay thank you everyone understood the problem statement here what is the problem statement that ford is trying to solve when the new car comes by using all these sensor data tell me what is the problem statement has anyone understood the problem statement what are we really trying to solve here whether there will be a fatal accident or not fatal even accident. before the accident happens we want to predict it isn't it prediction what is the use of prediction to stop the accident somehow maybe completely stopping the accident may not be possible at least we can reduce the fatality of the accident isn't it okay. that means like at least uh, you know human loss or loss of life can be uh, reduced okay because uh, it, it all happens in a fraction of a second not every time you can totally avoid an accident but there will be a collision but make sure that you know there will be uh, you know less fatal accident somehow that is their idea okay do you think uh, are there any cars which are already having this feature right now there are few high end cars which are already coming up with this particular type of uh, you know accident prevention or accident control or reduction of the fatality of the accident we'll go to our classroom get the data <laughs> yeah yeah go ahead manas the tesla is there i think hmm tesla tesla to like even more advanced it is almost yeah. like even without a driver they will be you know yes. doing this isn't it what i'll do is i'm going to float this random forest go to your classroom random forest random forest i'm pasting the link in the chat window you can directly access otherwise you can import the packages import the data set here in this problem statement what are the features what are the features 
features are nothing but sensor one, sensor two, sensor three, like the 22 columns are there. Those are the features, 22 features are there. right decision tree there is nothing really hard to discuss about decision tree go ahead with decision tree let me know what is the accuracy of decision tree then we, all of us will go to random forest first build a decision tree model tell me what is the accuracy of your decision tree model What is the accuracy of the decision tree model? 85. How much is the accuracy that you are getting? So let us check. So when we are building this decision tree model, we got train accuracy is 86, test accuracy is 85. So 86 and 80. Once you are done with the decision tree, send me a message. All of us together, we will once again recap the hyperparameters of random forest. Then we will fine tune. Now, are you ready for the random forest discussion? We're going to build a random forest. Once again, what are the hyperparameters in the random forest? Shall I wait? Quickly stop me if you want to wait for two more minutes. Are you done with this entry, everyone? Yes, sir. Okay. So what is the first hyperparameter in random forest that we should fine tune? I talked about a couple of hyperparameters in random forest. We need to set them correctly. Then only we will get the best random forest model. What is the first hyperparameter? An estimator. The, what is the first hyperparameter? When we are building a random forest model, what is the first hyperparameter? Number of trees, isn't it? Yes, yes. Or no? Do you remember it? Yes. Number of trees. We have denoted that with what? What is the number that we have denoted that with? Number N. of trees. K. Yes. You remember the random forest while we are discussing that algorithm? Number of trees. K. Yes or no? Yes. Number of trees. K is the first hyperparameter. Usually, number of trees. K. It should be a large number or a small number. Large. Large. It should be a large number. Maybe you want to try in a range of somewhere around 50 to 300. Don't try a small number. When you are in doubt, try a very large number. If it is, if optimal value is 75 trees, let us suppose. Even if you give 100, it will not be a problem. But if optimal value is 75, if you give 25 or 30, then it will be a wrong value. Okay. Do we know at this point within one shot? Can we get to know what is the optimal number of trees within one shot? Or do no. we need to discover based on the data? Based on the data, we have to discover. Based on data. Hyperparameters, you have to discover based on the data. These are only some of the tips and tricks. And 
the hyperparameters is that a single value that is optimal or is it a range of values usually the optimal hyper parameter is not a single value it's a range of values if you are near to that range then you are through okay number of trees k should be a larger number what is the next hyper parameter number of features number of features number of features we have denoted number of features with P. what symbol P. P. and what should be p value very much less than uh, much much less than the overall number of columns t columns are there overall how many columns are there in your data set right now right now how many columns are there each sensor is a feature how many features are there overall there are 22 22 columns are there so there are 22 columns in your data set t is 22 if t is 22 what can be a good number for p square root of square, square. square root of t something like either 4 or 5 or 6 or 7 like maybe somewhere around 4 to 7 is what you can try okay is 4 to 7 fixed for all the problems in this world no sir. no somewhere around this Again, it's a range of values. You should be near to that range. The other hyperparameter is max depth of each decision tree inside random forest. Max depth D of each decision tree. Now, the trick here is what is the single decision tree, standalone decision tree depth? How much? Standalone decision tree depth. How much? Six. Here, in this example, standalone decision tree depth is six. six. And this decision tree uses how many features? Four. How many features the standalone decision tree is using? We can use all. All features, isn't all it? Yes. Are we using only four features or all features when you're building all. decision tree? Have you mentioned all. that I'm going to use only less features, single decision tree? This is normal decision tree, isn't it? We are using all 22 features, okay? Using 22 features, depth is 6. Here, are we using, if you come to random forest, within that, if you come to single decision tree, you're using 4 to 7 features only. Do you agree? Let's say if you said max features is 5, you'll be using 5 only. Since you're using lesser features, you can keep this depth somewhat 50% higher than single decision tree. Let's say if single decision tree is 6, 50% higher, how much? Something nine. like 9 or 10 you can keep. Why slightly higher depth? Why is it going to push you to overfitting if you put this depth? Why you will not get overfitting? Because you are not using all the here. Depth is 6 for using 22 features. But here depth is 9 or 10 by using only five features. 4 or 5 features or whatever we have set. With all these parameters, you have to look at the train accuracy. You have to look at the test accuracy. Overfitting, underfitting may happen. Then you may have to fine tune them, find the right combination. Is it a single solution or can there be multiple solutions giving the same accuracy? Usually multiple solutions, multiple combinations can give you the same accuracy. What I want you to do right now is this parameter is known as N estimators. This parameter is known as max features. This parameter is known as max depth internally in the code. I want you to fine tune the code that you have in the code file is not going to work in the first go. I want you to fine tune based on these suggestions. In the chat window, in the output, I want you to put five numbers within one message. Don't put a lot of messages, just one message with five numbers, number of trees, Next number is features. Next number is depth. With that combination, what is the train accuracy? Test accuracy. Go ahead, everyone. Give me your answer by fine-tuning it in the chat window. Exactly five numbers you try to put in one message. Fine-tune them.
just put five numbers for avoiding the confusion. Don't put any other messages kindly. What five numbers I told you? Number of trees, number of features, next steps, train test accuracy. Number of trees is 20. Why very such number, Manas? Should be what? What should be number of trees? Tell me. What should be number of trees? Usually, when we are 50, sir. it should be very large number, isn't it? Minimum yes, 50, 100, like that we should try, right? Yes. Yes, sir. No. So, this is not going to give you right results. So, don't try this. Go ahead. Fine tune this, all of you. Try to fine tune based on the suggestions provided here. Okay. Don't just execute that code. I want you to fine tune and find the result. Anybody got better accuracy? Then give me those five numbers. Anybody got better accuracy, please give me the combination that gave you good train and test accuracy. Hundred trees, that's a good number. Five features, not bad. Nine depth, not bad. 90 and 88. This looks good. I have only one suggestion. Sometimes if you try slightly higher, maybe slightly higher here, maybe 6 or maybe 10. That may push your accuracy a little bit more. Or maybe it may give you the same accuracy. You can try around that also. Okay. That is the only suggestion. Slightly higher, slightly higher, it may get a bit, little bit of accuracy more. In the chat window, try to put only exactly 5 numbers so that I can write them down here. Give me your combination, everyone else. Venkatesh, 100 trees, that's good. Six, that's good. Nine, that's good. 91, 89. This looks pretty much final to me. No real suggestion. Maybe just a case if you try 10. Sometimes you may get the same answer or nearby the same answer 0 0.5 percent or something it is pretty much good okay next one is smithy shri 70 not bad 7 not bad 100 oh sorry 10 that's good and then 90 percent 89 so this is pretty much final no real suggestions. I think 89 is the max that we can, maybe 89.5 something you might have got. 125, 5, 9, 91, and 89. Not bad. This is pretty much final. The only thing is like try 10 sometimes. You may get slight better accuracy or it may give you the same accuracy. A little bit in and around that. Rajkumar, 100 trees, 6, 10, 92, 90. Roughly almost 89, 90 is the final accuracy that you must be getting. Everybody, 89 point something, 89 point something or 90, something like that.
89 point something. You must be ending up with 89.89 plus only. Okay. Somebody has built 200 trees. That's not bad. When you are in doubt, you can give higher number of trees. That's not bad. 10 features. That seems to be slightly higher for me, but test accuracy is not good. 90.28 only. What about the train and test accuracy? Try to put the train and test accuracy, both of them, so that, that I can write here. Hundred trees. Six is the feature. Ten. Good, good, good. All of them are fine. Ninety-two and ninety. Yeah. Usually eighty-nine ninety is the a max that you can get 100 trees six features 10 92 90 i think i have already written that yeah hundred trees 10 features slightly higher but let us see 10 depth not bad 93 90 i would say if 93 is the accuracy on train data, what is the accuracy expected on test data? 93 or 92 or 91, but you are getting 90. I would say this is a slight overfitting. It's better to have 90 to 90. One or two percent is fine. But more than that, generally the business is not comfortable. My suggestion is try to reduce it a little bit maybe seven or six you may get the same result but 90 to 90 a little bit of overfitting will be reduced okay usually overfitting is what the difference is more than five points but when you are strict here we are very strict we are saying that a difference of only two points is allowed. More than two points, I would like to consider that as a, a little bit of case of overfitting. Okay, that's the thing. These are all the results. What I'm trying to tell you here is the optimal values, like this also gave the same result. This also gave the same results. This and this gave the nearby results or this one and this one gave the same result. What I'm trying to tell you is the optimal value is not a single combination. It's a range of values. Multiple combinations can give you optimal value. Basically, you have to use your own tips and tricks, somehow reach that maximum accuracy on train data, matching accuracy on test data. You have to reach using your own tips and tricks. You can follow these, some of the suggestions given here, okay, to reach the optimal values, okay. So you just need to be near to those optimal values range then that is sufficient you don't need to find the exact precise one multiple solutions can give you the same accuracy most of the times that's what happens when you are fine-tuning the models optimal values are a range of values that is the final conclusion to random forest model a decision tree gave you 85 percent accuracy random forest you could push it to 90 percent accuracy and uh, do you think this 5% lift, is it a good significant one here? Do you think we should invest in random forest or we should live with 85% accuracy of the decision tree? Which one is preferred here? Random forest. In random fact, forest. we would say like, in fact, given a chance, we would like to push it to 98% or 96%. Like we want to make as secure vehicles as possible, isn't it? Like we don't want to build lesser accurate model. So there are some scenarios where accuracy is at most priority. This is one such case study where accuracy is the maximum priority where we are using this model. That is the story of random forest model. Any questions on this? <clears throat>